I have some great news. The dream classic car rest mod you've always wanted may be more affordable than you think because you actually might be able to write part or all of it off as a business expense. I'm going to go into great depth on that particular topic in this video. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brooke Walsh for the Rest of Mod Academy. If you're new to this channel, this is a place where we talk about all things Rest of Mods. We talk about product gear reviews, we give how-to guides in terms of how to care for your Rest of Mod, and then we actually will answer some common questions and some questions that maybe aren't so common about Rest of Mods. Like today, we're answering a question, can I write off my Rest of Mod? If you're new here, consider subscribing. We'd love to keep you up to date on our journey of all things Restamod. So let's get right down to business. Yes, there actually are a fair amount of scenarios where you can deduct your Restamod as a legitimate business expense. So to kind of do this analysis, we're going to go through three different topics. One's going to be that of a self-employed or a sole proprietor. We're going to talk about uh, that again as a small business owner, which is kind of similar to a sole proprietor, but a little bit different. And we're going to talk about those differences. And the third uh, way we're going to talk about this is if you're employed for someone else. Along the way, we're going to talk about things like depreciation, capitalization, um, operating expenses, and things like that. The difference of being self-employed and a sole proprietor are, I guess, more or less legal structure. So from a sole proprietor perspective, the IRS describes a sole proprietor as a sole trader uh, it's an unincorporated business, and they pay tax on the profits earned from their business. Um, they can have multiple jobs. Some of those jobs can go on at the same time. They can do uh, usually project-based work. They work for a client until a project is completed. In the structure of a sole proprietor, um, you can deduct the cost of uh, the business on your personal vehicle. Key here is just to make sure that you keep everything, you know, written down clearly, um, as always. So a small business owner, you know, very similar really to a sole proprietor, but what they're kind of talking about here, it's a little bit more formal. Um, so there's probably some sort of a structure involved. It could be a limited liability corporation, you know, LLC, a C Corp, which I think now they just call a corporation, an S corporation, a partnership. So the idea is that a small business has one or many owners and probably somewhat more of a formal uh, legal structure. Um, so when it comes to a small business owner, we're going to talk about this really uh, being more of a, a fleet. So you're purchasing a vehicle really exclusively for business. And so you're going to be able to take advantage of um, capitalization, depreciation, and things like that. So... Uh, I'll get into each of those topics uh, next. All right, so <laughs> under this small business owner, uh, operating expenses really are things like um, expenses that happen as a normal part of your business. Could be marketing, could be rent, could be payroll insurance, all those kinds of things are under operating expenses. Some other key terms that we should talk about would be capitalization, which is basically an accounting method. It includes the, the original cost of a uh, asset and it's it, it takes it over its useful life. So in this particular case, if we're talking about a Restomod, uh, the useful life of this Restomod would be an accounting n estimate of the number of years that's likely to remain in service, and then you can capitalize that as opposed to expense the whole thing at once. And then depreciation, depreciation is really an accounting method uh, to allocating cost against an asset. And so, you know, what they call like a useful life or a life expectancy, um, depreciation really is a representation of how much of an asset's value has been used up. Depreciating assets helps companies earn revenue from an asset while expensing a portion of the cost of that asset while it's in use. So at a high level, those are kind of some of the different um, uh, operating expenses and cost factors around owning a, a fleet vehicle. We're going to get into that much further but for now, um, I hope you can see the difference between a sole proprietor versus a more formal structure of being a small business owner. The third topic we said we would talk about, which is so you have a full-time job for someone where they own the company 
And so probably the most likely way you're going to have any tax benefits there would just be using your Restomod for, for business use. So if you've got a seminar you need to go to in Grand Rapids, you can go to that seminar and uh, you, can, you can expense your gas uh, back and forth, actual mileage. And the mileage rates are pretty darn good. Uh, they vary between you know, 48 to 55 cents per mile. And so, uh, you know, so that's probably your biggest way that you could do it. So the bottom line is, no matter where you fall into the range of being a sole proprietor, a small business owner, or if you were to work for someone else, there definitely are absolutely tax advantages to buying a Restomod. And where possible, you should uh, you and can uh, take advantage of those. Like with anything with the IRS, uh, just keep very clear records. And if you can articulate you know, how you're using the vehicle, what business purpose you use, and you have good documentation in terms of receipts and things like that, uh, it's pretty straightforward and it's easy to do. Okay, so now, that really is the bulk of the video at a high level, but we are gonna go into a little bit more depth and talk about different ways and more creative ways to use this as a tax deduction. We'll talk about a home office. We'll talk about um, the mileage reimbursement. We're gonna talk about can you actually uh, get reimbursed for maintaining the vehicle? Uh, can you get reimbursed for repairing the vehicle? And so stick around if you want some, I guess, overtime information on this topic. All right, well, thanks for sticking around for, I guess, overtime. I'm a sports guy, so we'll just call it overtime. Um, and we're gonna talk about just two quick things. Uh, we're gonna talk about resto mods and what we can uh, write off from uh, a repair perspective, and then also from a mileage perspective, a mileage reimbursement. So the first question is, you know, are you able to write off uh, repairs. Yeah, you actually are able to write off repairs, but there are a couple rules that apply as follows. You can use an actual expense method or a standard mileage rate. So with the actual expense method, it's the actual cost of the expenses incurred you can write off. So um, the little caveat though is only to the extent that you use the vehicle for business use. So uh, if you are a sole proprietor and maybe you live in a warm weather state, where you would have a classic car rest mod you drive year round, um, or even if you live in northern Michigan like I do, and you have a rest mod that you drive only in the summer, uh, whatever percentage you use that vehicle for personal use versus business use is the corresponding expense you can write off. So if it's 50-50, you can write off 50% of all the expenses incurred. So with the actual expense, things that qualify according to the IRS would be uh, gas purchase, uh, oil change, tire purchases, um, car wash, insurance, uh, and then uh, you can depreciate the vehicle. Uh, the other way, and quite frankly, the much easier way for many people is standard mileage rate. You can just get reimbursed to standard mileage rate. So right now, uh, I believe it's 57.5% per, per, uh, uh, reimbursement. So uh, in other words, if you put on, uh, like me, if you use your car only for the summer, uh, so 10,000 miles would be, what, $5,750 that I could write off uh, for business use. Now, if you do the actual mileage reimbursement, that, that fixed fee includes all of the costs, the insurance, the repairs, the gas mileage, the gas purchase, all those kinds of things. It's a much easier route to take for almost everyone. Um, to just use that. Um, so what does the IRS consider a business drive? They consider any secondary office a business drive. So for me personally, um, I live in a town called Bloin City. It's in Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan is a great place to be in the summer. Not so good in January and February, um, but it's great in the summer. And we have offices in Harbor Springs, um, Traverse City. Those are about roughly an hour, 45 minutes away. Uh, Charlevoix, about a half an hour away. And so, uh, so I can basically drive my Restomod to those places and write it off because it's a secondary place of work. It's not where I work every day. Um, business related errands, and these are sneaky. They can catch up to you quickly. So for, for again, for me, if I drive to say Home Depot, which is about 25 minutes one way, um, I can write that trip off. And it's a lot more fun to go to Home Depot with my Restomod than a pickup truck. Uh, in the summer anyway. Um, mileage to and from an airport or a business trip and any meetings that you might have with clients or if you have a temporary job site. Uh, we also do some real estate where we um, will buy and flip properties and so I can drive to and from that. Um, so in your world, I don't know exactly how it works, but for me, those are some really practical ways that um, 
uh, I can write off my repair and use of a resta mod, and this of course helps keep my wife off my back with expenses because we all know how darn expensive these resta mods are uh, to maintain and to improve and all that kind of stuff. My last overtime topic is a question that uh, I have a friend who owns his own accounting firm. Actually, I have a couple different friends that own accounting firms. And um, I also have, um, I, I guess you could say a friend I've developed at the IRS because she's done a lot for me. Um, but the um, a couple of the most common problems small business owners get themselves into are the vehicle usage and home office usage. Um, and because they don't know how to use either one correctly. So the, one of the most common questions asked are, can I deduct mileage to and from work? Well, especially in Northern Michigan, we have lots of long commutes. Uh, sometimes I've, I've heard of people commuting one hour. I have a friend that goes back and forth to Traverse City. That's about mm, 45 minutes in good weather, probably an hour, maybe even a little over in bad weather, just one way. And so the answer to that is generally speaking, no. You cannot deduct mileage to and from your work. The IRS defines the trip to and from your home as non-deductible because it's really the choice where you live. It's personal. If you have an hour and 15 minute commute one way, well, then you could move if you wanted, right? But there is a workaround, and the workaround is uh, pretty straightforward. One, way, one of the ways to do that is to have a home office. Again, I can't stress enough how it's not complicated, but make sure you're playing by the rules of what a home office is and what it's not. And uh, it will save you money on taxes, and it will allow uh, you to claim a portion or recover a portion of the rent, uh, mortgage utilities, and other home expenses. Uh, and it also will help you with mileage and deduction. So here's a high-level checklist of home office and where it may be helpful for you, particularly if you have a real long commute, you know, an hour and a half uh, one way. Uh, again, it's crazy, but some people do it. Um, and if you're in Chicago and you know you you only go 20 miles or 10 miles and it takes you an hour, hour and a half, that's not going to do much value to you. But up north, it's a little bit different where I live. Uh, it could really be it could be significant, frankly. I know people that are putting 20,000 miles plus a year on their car, and um, that's a lot. So, anyways, here's the high level checklist on a home uh, office deduction. Uh, let me just. Just remember. Um, so you have to, first of all, you have to use your only for business. It's business use only. So if you've got a home office and you've got a, a, a projection unit in there and bunk beds and a, a full bed and everything else, that isn't really a home office. It needs to be a home office business use only. It's only uh, allows the self-employed now, as far as I know, uh, again, check with an uh, accountant on that, but I'm pretty sure it's only if you're self-employed. Just keep in mind, if you are using a home office, it has to be for business use only. And it, it really is only for the self-employed. So that will be a good workaround if you have a long commute. As I've said from the start, and I think I've said it a couple different times, you know, you got to play by the rules. Uh, there's not a lot of gray area when it comes to that. So talk to your accountant and just make sure you dot the I's and you cross the T's. But owning a rest of mod is fun. Uh, it's oftentimes pretty expensive. But there are a lot of ways available to you to take advantage of tax laws and to write off a portion of your rest of mod. You just have to be a little bit creative and think of how you use your rest of mod in the summer. But if you, you know, again, if you drive to Petoskey, and you're self-employed, first of all, and you drive to, um, Petoskey is meaning to you, and you drive 25, 30 minutes one way and 25, 30 minutes back, uh, that's mileage and that's real um, expense. Do that throughout the course of a year or whatever portion you use your rest mod can be significant. So uh, it's there for you. Take advantage of it and enjoy your rest mod. Thanks again for taking the time and to view this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Owning a rest of mod is great. Here are just a couple tips and tricks that may make the overall enjoyment experience better. And if it did for you, please like the video. If you want to get more information just like this, uh, just helpful tips and tricks for owning rest of mods, then subscribe. And every time uh, a new video comes out, you'll be the first to know. And if you click on that bell, um, it'll also alert you to uh, any new videos as well. As always, enjoy your rest of mod. Oh, 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 oh,